Christian lives. You know, I, I think some people must have looked ahead in the lectionary and saw what readings we had this week and decided to rely on that grace and take Sunday off, and that's okay. So as I was preparing this week, I had a voice just running through my head, and it was a voice that I used to not particularly be very fond of. It was a professor of mine. You see, I'm a nerd, as many of you have already learned, and um, before going to seminary, I did a degree in religion and specifically studied um, um, the scriptures in, in particular and biblical languages in my undergraduate degree. Um, and so I loved, loved, loved studying Hebrew and Greek, but there was just this one professor. And this professor, his voice still rings between my ears sometimes, and I couldn't stand him. <laughs> he, you probably know where the story's going already, the one person you don't like, and turns out they're good for you in the end, but you didn't realize it till later, that that's this story. <laughs> Let's call him Dan, because that's his name, and Dan, <laughs> Dan was St. Paul. St. Paul, in my mind, was Dan, and Dan should have retired, at least in my mind, 20 years before I was sitting in his <laughs> biblical exegesis class. And on day one, when we are starting in the class on Paul, and he comes in and starts yelling at us in Greek. Now, Dan was fluent in seven modern languages and I think something like four or five ancient languages. But he came in yelling at us in Greek. And that's the voice I hear of St. Paul when we hear, well, anything, but particularly today's lesson. Should we continue in sin so that grace may abound? By no means. Now, our translations, we, we get one nice little exclamation point there, and uh, we, we can maybe hear some of Paul's passion. But the phrase there, I will remember it from that very first day in Dan's class, meganointa, this Greek phrase that really was like an expression of swearing. It was um, not something you would politely say in mixed company, and it was, well, as strong and emphatic as one could say, absolutely heck not, essentially. <laughs> By no means. And, well, like I gave a little bit of foreshadowing how the story would go. Come to find out, I didn't like, I thought I didn't like Paul because I didn't like Dan back in those days. And then I started reading Paul and trying to not hear Dan's voice. And then I realized maybe Dan was actually kind of right all along the way. Maybe Paul wasn't so bad. Romans chapter 6 and I'll say this about most of Romans, but Romans chapter 6 is one of my favorite passages, and not just because we get this emphatic passion from St. Paul, but it really, I think, is the core of, this, of our Christian message. And St. Paul certainly was passionate, if you've heard his story, if you've even just heard this passage. But if you remember, St. Paul was, well, he identified as a Jew's Jew. He was the one who was so trained in the law, in the teaching, he was trained in rhetoric. He was logical. And in this passage, we see all of that come out. It starts with this question, should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? At chapter 6, he's anticipating what his readers are going to be asking. Because Paul's been talking a lot about grace. Grace this and grace that. And so, of course, if someone says and hears the good news that it's all about grace, then they'll say, well, I'll just go on sinning. There's enough grace to make up for anything I want to keep doing. And he preempts that. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. But it's still all about grace. So he's Paul in this passage and in the next couple of chapters is really helping his readers wrestle with what's it mean to live in grace and, 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 and still try to live a Christian life. The good news, the gospel that we hear from St. Paul in this passage from Romans, 
is that we who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized, yes, into his death so that we might walk in newness of life. Jesus, the one who has died, yes, and been resurrected. The one who by the power of the Spirit was given new resurrection life by the creator of the universe, by the giver of all life, gives us that life, and there is nothing we can do to earn it, and there is nothing, nothing, nothing we can do to undo what Christ has done. Christ has died and won't die again. Death no longer has dominion over him, this powerful phrase from St. Paul, and nothing we can do can undo what Christ has done for us. Nothing, no sin, if we're going to stick with St. Paul's language here, no sin we could live in could ever outweigh the grace that is made available to us. The good news is that by virtue of baptism, and again, not something we earn, but by the promise God has made, that those of us who have been baptized have died with Christ and have been raised to new life with him. That all of us who have been baptized, we don't have to worry about sin and death and hell because we know for sure. You know, that's we talk about in the sacraments that they are sure and certain means, meaning we can trust them. Paul here is telling us, you can trust God. God... God in Christ, who died for you, has given new life, and that can never be taken away. So he says, go live in the fullness of grace. Don't worry. Don't worry about being separated from God. Nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us. It's good news, and so Paul was rightly passionate, and I think in hearing Paul, we are called to be passionate. We are called to go out and live into the grace that God has given us, not worrying if we sin or if we do something that, well, maybe it's just not the best option that anything we might do could ever separate us. Because there is grace. There is grace. So no, don't go around and intentionally go around trying to sin. Also, don't worry about it. Live into grace. Because if you're living in the life that God gives by the power of the Spirit, if you're living this resurrection life, you'll know you're on the right path. You will know the freedom and grace and peace and joy that come in this resurrection life. Should we go on sinning? Absolutely not. The death Christ died for us. He died once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.